and welcome back to my metaverse and me as you guys know and if you've seen the trailer to this channel I'm building a game from scratch so basically teaching myself how to use Unreal Engine 5 and um, this chap from Skillshare is helping me so I'm at stage 10 of what is a colossal amount of chapters as I build the game and you guys join me this will be the first 2d stage game that I learn and then I'll be moving into a 3d blueprinted game and this will be completely project managed it'll be a business plan and it's a massive move forward as a token so it'll be a tokenized game it'll be a metaverse game in the crypto industry so guys if you like the sound of that i do need subscribers <laughs> and it's not begging or anything like that the bigger this community the quicker the chance i get to open up discord open up the the token itself and then start a marketing campaign so as you guys buy into the token a small percentage of that money goes into marketing and it allows me to propel the game out into the open network so that out of the way i'm going to continue with maple story and carry on building the game i'm going to try and get through the next three chapters three or four chapters that'll make sure i am 10 percent of the way through the game enjoy the video Okay, so I'm just firing up Unreal Engine 5. Open up Maple Small. Now this guy just goes through the the tile lines here, so you can see these gaps in the lines, and it's a way of removing those grids. So let's crack on with the video. All I've done here is opened up my project and opened up the tile map. Now let's go back to our tile map, and I want to show you something. You can see here when I move around, when I right click and pan around. You can see that the sky is flickering, and so are my tiles. It's very subtle, but for example, you can see here the line here, it is cutting off my tiles. So sometimes the tiles are also uh, flickering. And we want to remove that flickering because this will also happen for you in-game. So let us close this tile map here, and what you want to do is, on these tile sets, simply right-click on the tile set and click on Condition Tile Sheet Texture. And now it's going to create something new for you, just press Enter, and it will create this for you. So these are padded, so it automatically pads the tiles for you. So you can see here. So yeah, back to content draw. We'll right click the tile map and then actually click on where the assets are. So in this case, TS Dragon. Go to condition tile sheet texture and then press enter. And then I'm going to do the same with the other. Mm, can't do it with that one. Oh yeah, so you have to go back to your environments, um, environments folder, right click and condition tile sheet texture and press enter. We go back to environments again, that's where my original assets are. It doesn't like that, it's frozen somewhere. Uh, it doesn't look, really look different from before, but the difference is, is if I go back to my tile set, now, if I click on my tile before, it selected the tile here at the sides, but you can see the engine automatically padded your tiles. So they will never flicker because we have those paddings on every single tile. And the same thing it did for all of the other tiles that you have. Let's do the same thing for the background. Let's right click on the tile set and click on condition tile sheet texture and let us click on enter. Okay, so now it finished padding my second texture. It took some time because it was such a large texture and it almost seems like your um, engine has crashed, but it has not. So going back to the environment and clicking on my tile map now, you can see when I zoom in. And yeah, so as he says, I thought mine had crashed and it hasn't, so I'm just waiting for that right now. And I move around, you can see that the flickering has gone away. And this also applies for in-game, so we have removed that flickering. So whenever you import some tiles to add for your maps, remember to right-click on the tile set and click on Condition Tile Sheet Texture, and it will automatically uh, pad this texture for you and you will remove all of these uh, flickering problems. Let us now place our level that we created here inside of our map. So closing this down, remember we made a map here, a level called main. So double clicking on that to make sure you're inside of here. You can also see it here to the right, you are inside of the map main. Inside of here, simply go to the environment and click and drag your tile map. So not the tile sets, but the tile map. So click and drag and you can drop it here in the environment. Remember? Okay. 
I think I missed a step there. So double clicking on that to make sure you're inside of here. You can also see it here to the right. You are inside. Mm, double clicking on it for me. Okay, so <clears throat> I, I had to close what I was in. So I was in the tile map. I had to close that, then go to maps, then double click back to environments, and then I dragged that into my map. It's happening there. So back to content draw maps, double click. Again, close that. There you go. I'm just going to move that up. Right, we are in. Out of the map main. Inside of here, simply go to the environment and click and drag your tile map. So not the tile sets, but the tile map. So click and drag, and you can drop it here in the environment. Remember our navigation from before, you can right click and hold uh, W, D, S, and A to move around. And you can see this is the tile map that we have added. Now I like to m remove this grid because I can't really see what's going on. So clicking on this tile map in the details panel, you can go down and find here under rendering show easy for tile grid when selected I am going to untick this so I can see my map and this is the map that we have created what I like to do is I like to place it at the location of 0, 0, 0. So this is my initial map. I like to start at 0, 0. Now it doesn't really say where that is, but um, once you've been down to rendering, which is there, just scroll back up to the top and then put zero 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 and then tab out of that and I have to for some reason it's below below the floor but I'm sure he'll explain that later zero, zero. so this is simply it we created the map and since this is a 3d engine Remember, this is not a 2D engine. You can see here, if you look at the side of your um, your tile map, these are actually layered tiles. So remember, inside of the tile map, we created our uh, layers over here. And so you can see all of these layers uh, stacking together here in a 3D environment. What I want to do, I want to separate those layers because later on, we want to make sure we don't have a problem when the player is moving around. And I'm going to go down here and here in the separation per layer, I'm just going to increase it to something extreme so you can see what's going on. So something like 50, and I'm going to save. Can actually see these layers now they are separated from each other now what i like to do here in the separation i like to write 10 and i want to show you why i write 10 or you can also write 15 that's okay it doesn't really matter but i want Now what I like to do here in the separation, I like to write 10, and I want to show you uh, we created our uh, layers over here, and so you can see all of these layers uh, stacking together here in a 3D environment. What I want to do, I want to separate those layers because later on we want to make sure we don't have a problem. When so he went back into the tile map, he's not on the main map now, so content draw, textures, double click and then in setup separation layer I'm pretty sure he goes to a hundred at some point so we'll do that and then go back into the map and then you'll probably be able to see Yep, 
here we go, look, we can see we have separated these quite a long way. So now just back to the front, which is wee. <coughs> Let's go. And the player is moving around, and I'm going to go down here, and here in the separation per layer, I'm just going to increase it to something extreme so you can see what's going on, so something like 50, and I'm going to save. You can actually see these layers now. They are separated from each other. Now, what I like to do here in the separation, I like to write 10, and I want to show you why I write 10, or you can also write 15, that's okay, it doesn't really matter, but I want to show you why I'm not going with 4, why I'm going with 10 instead, for example. So clicking on, on here, you can see now we have separated the layer. So you can imagine if the character is standing here on the ground on these tiles, you're technically standing on this, this base layer that we created. There are 10 pixels from this layer here to the front layer here. So now the separation, since we wrote 10, the separation is 10 pixels for each layer. So you have a freedom to add things in between these layers. So for example, if you want to add an item in front of these uh, background props, but you want to add it behind the player walking around, obviously you have to select the number uh, that is between these two layers. So the larger you make these layers, the more freedom you will have in placing items beside or between these layers. So I don't think we need more than 10. I never needed more than 10. So I'm going to write 10 instead. And to make sure that my, my ground tiles are at zero, because this will make it easier for us later on when we are programming, I simply want to push this layer here. These are my tiles to in front of here so it's in the middle so you can see here at the pivot point when you have the move tool selected when you click on it you have the move tool selected you can see if you want to move it this direction you have to move it by 10 and now it's actually correct remember our snapping tool is snapping to every 10 degrees 10 pixels rather not degrees Yeah, so if he says 10, <coughs> I'll do 10, 2. So now it's actually correct, because with the snapping we made it to 10, so you can see now it's now the background is at 0, 0, 0. And when you write 10 here in the Y, you have those, uh, those normal tiles as 0, 0, 0. And this will make it a lot easier for us later on when we are programming. Alright, so the problem that we have right now in our level is that the lighting and colors are not correct. So as you can see here, if I open my tile map, and if I zoom in here, you can see the difference between this tile map, the correct colors and what it looks like, and this is our level. So it definitely looks... I don't think it looks too bad on my screen, but you can see the light blaring through there. Okay, I see it. What I've done there is I've just clicked and dragged the tab um, to move it down, but look, you can, a bit like a, um, a Chrome Explorer, you can just have these next to each other. You can click and drag and move that to one side, but I'm gonna have these next to each other. And back to the video wrong and the lighting is too strong and this is where the post process volume comes in so up here in the quickly add button let's click up here and then go to visual effects and let's add this one
one called post process volume. So the post process volume, what it is, it's just like in Photoshop. When you put a, an image inside of Photoshop, you can edit the image's colors. You can edit the saturation, the brightness of the image. The same thing goes here in Unreal Engine. We use a post process volume to change the lighting and the colors and so on. So almost just like color grading. So we have the post process volume and what we want to do is scroll down here and we want to tick this one called infinite extent. So it's just above replication. Infinite extent. What this does is it affects the whole world. If you don't press this, this will only work whenever you are inside of this box. So for example, just to demonstrate it for you, I am going to increase this bloom. So going for the intensity of 10, so very extreme. And if I go here inside of my box, you can see the bloom is taking effect, that dreamy effect. And if I go outside of this post-process volume box, it goes back to normal. So you can see the difference. Okay, so instead of going inside of this, no uh, this box here and maybe like trying to make this box fit the level we don't really need to do that we just want to click on this one called infinite extent and it will affect the whole world so we don't need to be inside of this box for it to take effect okay so what we want to do i'm just going to place this uh, post process volume at zero 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 actually it doesn't really matter but i just like to do that yeah just go back to the top Zero, 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 tap, tap, tap. And then let's start going through all of these settings. And it took me around six to seven hours to actually nail this down with all the correct settings. So here in the bloom, let's set it to zero. We don't really want any bloom inside of our level. Yeah, his was set a ridiculous setting. Uh, mine isn't, but yeah, that's um, that's probably why mine looks better um, before we even start. But there we go. He probably has other settings and developing other games, so he he's had a, a, a massive number in there. Next, we are going down to exposure, and inside of exposure, let's tick the minimum brightness and maximum brightness, and let's set both of them to two, so two and two. Okay, so exposure. Minimax. Two. Two. And then let's go down to lens flare. Let's click on the intensity and set it down to zero. We don't really need lens flares. Two. Next, we're going to. Sorry, zero. To click on image effects, and for the image effects, we can set the vignette to zero. And before we. Do any color grading? Let's skip that a little bit for now. So going down and I'm going to find the uh, ambient occlusion. So the ambient occlusion we want to set to zero. We don't need that. And the motion blur as well, I'm going to set to zero. Okay, so we don't really have more settings to play with down here so let's go back to the color grading and again I spent seven hours I'm just closing all my menus because I'm tidy I just like to be tidy there we go we've got color grading or is doing this so just if I come with random numbers it's not because I'm guessing correctly it's because I've been trying my way to find the correct numbers here so here first in the global we can click that and let's take this one called saturation so you can increase you can see you can increase and decrease the saturation of the image 
And for this one, 0 0.98 was the perfect number. And let's scroll a little bit down here at the shadows. So clicking on the shadows and taking both the uh, saturation and the contrast and the gamma. So for the saturation, we want to go with 0 0.9. And with the contrast, let's go with 0 0.94. And with the gamma, let's go with 1.01. And let's go down now. And in the midtones, we don't really have anything, but in the highlights, if we click on that one, we just want to take this one called a Again, just minimizing my own menus. Highlights. Highlights minimum, so I'm going to set it to one. And then we are going down to miscellaneous. I'm going to... And just closing my own menus. Uh, did he say miscellaneous? Oh, no, it's misc. Take this one called tone curve amount, and we are going to put that down to zero. You can see that changes a lot. I'm going to take this one called to tone curve amount and we are going to I'm going to take this one called tone curve amount and we are going to put that down to zero you can see that changes a lot in our colors so going down to zero and this should fix all of our problems so now let's click on the tile map and you can zoom in and take a look and you can take a look at our level here and you can see they look perfectly the same now the small problem is now and we will fix that in the next lesson as you can see these are pixelated but you can see there's some sort of a smoothness inside of our level this is not too pixelated and this is because of the anti-aliasing that we have to remove but you can see here if you go to the lit mode and you go to the unlit mode this is what the correct uh, texture looks like so it, this is what it looks like without any lighting so if you go back to the lit mode, you can try to compare the two. So this is what we're trying to achieve. We're trying to achieve the lit mode being the same color as the unlit mode. So very close to each other. The only thing is that the lit mode is more smoothed out because of the anti-aliasing. And we'll fix that in the next lesson. All right, let's move the anti-aliasing, which is causing that smooth effect inside of our level. And we don't really need any smoothing when we are working with pixel art. We want to watch the true pixels. So we are going over to edit and let's go inside of our project settings. Inside of here, we... can scroll down and let's find this one called rendering inside of engine rendering and inside of here 
Now, this is NTL Async, but this is for mobile, and we are not making a mobile game right now, so this doesn't matter. So I'm going to go down here, and we want to find this one, Default Settings. While we are at it, let's actually remove a couple of things. The Bloom, we already set it to zero, but we can always uh, disable it here as well. The Ambient Occlusion as well. This one, the Auto Exposure. And we can also remove the Motion Blur. So all of these removed, and... This is the important one, the anti-aliasing method. I don't know if you can see a, a difference if I just put it here on the side and you can see if something happens when I disable it. So this temporal super resolution, if I click none, you can see the difference. Of course, you can keep it on if you want your game to be smoothed out like this, but for true pixel art, you actually don't have this. So clicking on none will uh, see... Yeah, I'm just giving it a go against the projects. Um, mm -mm -mm. To expand. So I've unticked Bloom, Ambient, uh, Ambient Inclusion, Static, Auto Exposure, and Motion Blur. Just underneath with anti aliasing, none. So temperate. Yeah, temporal. So you can see the change. There we go. See the true tiles and how they are created in the pixel art software. So now if we go in the unlit mode and the lit mode, this remember this is what we're trying to achieve, the same colors. You can see there's no difference now. And this is what we want. We want the lit mode to be the same as the unlit. And if you want to see the difference, clicking on this post-process volume that we worked with in the previous lesson, we can uh, click on this enable to remove it and you can see the difference now this is the unlit mode this is the true colors these are the lit mode and when we enable it we make it just like how we want it okay there guys so just a few kind of teething things that would actually make the game look good when we publish the game and it's basically the lighting the contrast or the motion blurring and everything like that removed or configured so that that doesn't carry over to the game so you imagine if we create this and it's on a web browser um, it creates it in the fashion that i've designed it so all of that all that light blurring and everything like that um, let's say you're playing the game at night and you don't have the lights on your screen would be basically burning that light and Sometimes it can make you feel tired and stuff like that. So it kind of corrects all of that. So when we're playing the game, we don't kind of burn our exposure to our own eyes. It doesn't make you tired when you're playing the game. And the colours and the saturation and, and contrast, they all look vibrant and nice and like a 2D game should. So thanks for watching, guys. I'm going to obviously create, um, create another side of this video where I keep building the game and making it look really nice for you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Know that they ride or die. I keep boys by my seat. Know that they ride or die.